Hmm. Sydney Potier. <gasps> oh my gosh, Space Cadets! One of my favorite YouTubers is on! The Bloodthirsty Cannibal Gamer! Now he primarily makes review compilations of old retro video games. <coughs> Let's watch! Hi, I'm the Bloodthirsty Cannibal Gamer, and I like retro games. This here video I call Super Nintendo Fighting Games Volume 1. The first game we're looking at is Rise of Robots. This game is terrible. I know that that's a short sentence, but it is. I will give it credit. It does have some good animation and good cutscenes that look like something from the early days of PS1, or maybe the 3 do. But needless to say, this is not a good fighter. It's super stiff. You can only play as one robot during one player mode. And he has no special moves, or if he does, I can't figure them out. All combat comes down to is jump and punch. And if you do the same move over and over again, your enemies do eventually figure that out. And they start blocking and doing other moves. The soundtrack is okay. I mean, it's nothing to write home about, but the game overall is just not very good. It makes me want to gouge out my eyes. It looks alright. I mean, it looks like shit by today's standard. Probably looked okay back in the day. I ain't into this game. I ain't into it at all. Alright, the next game is the best of the best championship karate, and it makes me feel like I'm about to play golf, or that I'm watching a workplace training video from the 1980s. Make the measurement, and I'll be done with the job. This is the busiest character select screen I've ever seen. You can assign moves to the controller pad in these unnecessarily complex move lists that are not fun or interesting and just kind of confuse me. If you want to change characters, all you can do is swap heads all set to that lighthearted music that is on the options screen. And it is really weird that when you change characters, all you are doing is changing out their heads. This is like Frankenstein or something, man. It's just freakish. I do have to say that the screen you actually fire on is well animated and thought out. I feel like I'm sitting in the audience. The lights are your health bar, the time is a board above the ring, you can see audience members cheering in the background. It looks good. I mean, I'm kind of impressed by this. There was a lot of thought that went into it. The ref is a little weird looking though. He looks like a Looney Tunes cartoon character. The gameplay in this game is not very good. Gameplay requires you to be the perfect distance for hits to land, and although it provides some suspense, it just isn't fun. I don't see myself ever coming back to this game. Battle Blaze for the Super Nintendo. For those who like their fighters Conan the Barbarian flavored, push start for all the epic brutal action. This music does not get me pumped. Now, the first thing you need to ask yourself is why does this game exist? Well, I assume money. It's just, it's just generic barbarian fighter game. You literally only have two buttons and one of those buttons jumps. None of the graphics are particularly noteworthy either. During the gameplay, the game kept handing me my butt until I discovered I could just push forward and spam the attack button. Tremendous. You fight four fantasy figures. After you beat each one, this thing happens. Didn't find out until the end that these characters had been possessed by phantasms. So I guess this is me defeating those phantasms? I don't know. The fifth character and final boss is a dark lord whose name I can't pronounce. This is how you beat him. Outstanding. You stab him, you watch him die, credits roll, and at the end of it, the game gives the computer a higher ranking than you. What the fuck is this shit about? There is a mode that lets you play two player or against the computer, where I learned that if you don't attack the computer, this happens. Superb. 10 out of 10. Alright, 
So the next game is Shaq Fu. I like Shaq Fu. It's flawed, mainly in the control department, but it's all right. I did a review for this on the Sega Genesis. You can check it out up here. Identical opening. Hey, product placement. Identical old man. Identical moment when Shaq enters the second world. And identical gameplay. In addition to the bad controls, the missing characters really bring down the game a bit. Amongst those missing characters is Nezu and his grandfather, which saddens me because the elderly and children are my favorite demographic to commit acts of violence against. You do still get to beat up women in the SNES version, but not being able to beat up an old man or little boy as my favorite NBA star Shaquille O'Neal is the greatest disappointment the SNES version of Shaq Fu delivers. I have to say, it saddens me to no end. Brutal, Pause of Fury. Why this game exists, I have absolutely no idea. It's got a great East Asia aesthetic but it can be summed up in a word. You start out entering your name. I'm going to go with Kirby-san. You get the character select screen and choose your character as you select them. You can see them doing martial arts in silhouette, which is actually kind of cool. You also get backstory and quotes by them. My favorite is to teach someone is to be responsible for them. Unfortunately, the gameplay isn't as great as the aesthetic. It's a simple fighter, no frills at all. And the character designs are less than Saturday morning cartoon shows. Stages are cool though. My favorite are the cave and the boat. These stages really make me want to travel to Asia. Every two fights you learn a new special move. Not really much to write home about on this one. Brutal Pause of Fury? I mean, it's okay if you get it for free. Ready kids? It's time for some Street Combat! This game is by Irem. I think they called this game Street Combat because maybe parents would mistake this game for Street Fighter and buy it instead at Christmas time. Does this game compare to Street Fighter? In a word, no. In two words, hell no. You can choose to play as this guy or his robot form. Either way, it doesn't matter because this game, it don't play too well. Jesus, look at that hair. And what's he doing here? Throwing Pixie dust? What the hell is this? The characters are goofy looking and poorly designed. I could have designed better stuff than this. I could have designed better stuff than this in my sleep. The way the main character gets knocked down sometimes, ugh, it's just silly looking. If he gets thrown, this is what it looks like when he lands. This is also the same pose he strikes if you get a game over. It's as if he's presenting, allowing your opponent the opportunity to show his dominance through the ultimate humiliation. Who decided to make this game over screen? Fire them. They should never work again. After every fight, your character throws out a quip. Hey babe, I'm most excellent. Yeah, that's the perfect thing to say. Just brag about yourself to some chick after you just beat the hell out of her. And lastly, this goofy looking thing is the final boss. After you defeat him, you go woohoo, I'm the champ. You get a trophy and learn that the main character's name is Steven. Holy freaking cow, God bless the 90s. There is no character named Steven in the history of the world who has ever been the hero of anything. And let's put that on a timeline. Ever. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about Weapon Lord, and all I have to say is Weapon Lord kicks ass. It's all heavy metal, sex, violence, and testosterone. It's as if Greg Capullo tried to draw a Conan comic, and this is what came out. The women are sexy, the men are chiseled out of marble, each stage screams barbarism. The atmosphere breathes brutality. What's the story? A child is born that will defeat the Demon Lord. This is the Weapon Lord. 25 years later, the Demon Lord holds a tournament, intent on defeating the Weapon Lord in combat. The final level, you fight atop a pile of bones covering a breathing demon as a giant moon rises in the background, and when you win, the moon becomes blood red. I only got two words for you: Hell and yeah. And how's the gameplay? It's okay. It's hard even on its easiest difficulty, but the game's good, and I'll probably play it again to master it at some point. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please give me your money on Patreon to support the show. Peace out.